Matt, something you said in the last clip sort of struck a chord with me. Uh, and to paraphrase, you know, you were talking about if you as pastor or as youth worker go into your context and you have this great idea and you're just going to say, I, I've got this and we're going to start it tomorrow and you're all excited and you get, you know, invested in this, but you, you tell your leadership and your church, this is where we're going. It doesn't always go well, <laughs> right? Um, approach matters on these things. And uh, I'm curious if you could elaborate a bit on what might be a good way to, if we have this vision, to bring it to our community? How do we start that? Yeah, I think, I, I, I think, um, I don't know. I tend to think about like, I don't have a vision for my community. The vision is going to come from the community and it's going to come together. So I, I'm always distrustful of my own assumptions um, and I'm very Calvinistic in that way. And so for me, I don't know who I am or what I'm supposed to do without the wisdom of the community. I really have always felt that way. And so um, to me, when I come back from a conference or someplace where there's a set of ideas, I'm also distrustful about solutions because my experience of life is that whether I'm putting together a piece of furniture for my child's room or anything else, everything's more complicated than it initially seems. So there is nothing simple. Um, and so, so what I wanna do is just invite people on a shared exploration um, of a complicated set of problems that nobody probably really knows how they came to be or how they're going to get solved. And so what we're going to do is just read and talk and discern together for as long as it takes until we feel ready to move at our best attempt to be a small spark of the kingdom breaking in and we'll chuckle at that the whole way because we know that, <laughs> that it's inadequate to the problem. And so to me, it's just about inviting them in to something that I don't have the answer to either. Um, and so people often, I feel like when I share about this, they people, people feel like it's starting from a negative point of view, which is a problem. But I don't feel that way about it. I think most of life is untangling problems and knots and trying to figure out why they are the way they are and what God is calling us to do about them. So what I really invite people into is say, there's a problem confronting our church. Don't, don't panic because it turns out it's confronting every church. And so we're going to learn about that problem. We're going to learn about maybe what some other people are trying to do about it. And then we're going to see what we want to do about it, if anything. And so it's really about inviting them on a journey you know, more than I'm pretty sure I know what the destination is. Let's go do it. Um, Cause even I don't trust when I go to places and somebody has this idea, the thing that's going to be I, the next, the next thing. I don't know. So I, it's really about a, a learning journey, a learning and discernment journey. Let's all go do this together and let's figure out what might come out of those conversations and discern that well together. They tell social entrepreneurs that you should fall in love with the problem, not the solution. Hmm. And I, that to me is what you're describing Matt. because if you can, if, if your congregation can really immerse themselves in this, it's a problem. Yes. But it's as, as people who are following Christ, it's also an opportunity, right? It's a way it's how are we going to embody Christ's love in this situation? Right. Yeah. And so the what you have to do is understand the situation, know it inside out and above all, be in conversation with the people it actually affects. Right. Yeah. So that so that whatever we're doing isn't done to them. It's done with them. And an awful lot of our design thinking, you know, education, which, you know, kindergartners now learn. Um, still has the framework of we are designing for people that we have studied, right? As opposed to equity-based design, which is we are designing with people who are on this journey alongside of us. I find that the hardest thing to get students or, you know, people who are just starting out to actually do is to go take the time to talk to the people and to build relationships with the people that they want to bless, right? But um we are very shy about doing that for some reason mm. um so i affirm all of that i'll tell you what my when i when i was a pastor um in a youth minister the kids in my church would always know when i'd been to a continuing education event because i would come home and then i would 
do all this stuff to them that I had just learned at the conference. And they would just roll their eyes and kind of roll with it. And it's like, she's got to get it out of her system somehow. And then they would ignore it and go back to doing whatever. So, right. Yeah. And I, I think part of it is taking away, like thinking about even the word problem differently. Like if you go to a rock climbing facility, I mean, technically speaking, that wall is a problem. But it's not in a negative context. It's just something that has to be navigated and surmounted. It's it what so I try to think about. I think like the way that I'm wired is I think about problems as just reality, and and that reality presents certain adaptive challenges that you have to engage with to just keep moving on and moving forward and getting to the ultimate goal, which is more of God's love, hope, peace, and joy breaking into the world. So if you can take the depressurize. The, and just come to terms honestly and soberly with these are the challenges confronting us. That's going to require some adaptations. It's a question of which adaptations are worth trying. I, I got one last thought on this. Runway, think like a pilot, right? And that it, there are two ways you can land a plane. You know, one is suddenly, which has all sorts of collateral damage that comes with it. Or one is if you have enough runway where you can kind of gradually come in and hit the brakes. And I think a lot of times we don't give ourselves enough runway to bring people on board or to learn what we need to learn. It's like painting a room. It takes as much time to prep the room as it does to paint the stupid thing. So um, yeah, we just sort of have to give ourselves a little bit more prep time. Mm -hmm. Yeah.